Well, again, um, you know, I'm going to argue that no, a lot of that those dairy farms are taking in a ton of feed for milk production. So it's not like they're it's all acres and acres of grazing land. I mean, hell, I live in New Jersey. Okay, a lot of cows here, and there are a ton of cows on a small farm. It's not a ton of cows on huge farms. Um. I drive by these dairy farms occasionally. You're right, it's a rather small area but for the cows to live in, but it's a lot of fucking cows. We're talking six, seven thousand um, head of cow um, in one area. Um, and it's a lot I of farms. Not by, by, by grains grown in the Midwest. They're not fed from this state. This state does not feed its own cows. But they're not getting a return on this. Um, uh, that grain could feed more people than that milk or that cheese. I agree. We all we agree on that. The point is, is if I go out and I buy an apple, the price of apples will just go up, okay? Because the farmers, the cartels, control the price. All right. And so, the more demand you create for it, the more they will isolate that demand and extort, extort a higher price for the product. It's like owning a copyright. If, you know, Microsoft doesn't give away the fucking operating system, does it? No, it pr charges you a preposterously inflated price for the value of the piece of shit because they own a copyright. If you haven't seen the movie Food Incorporated yet, I, it's, it's a it's a good it's a good movie it explains it goes into detail the food industry in the United States Food Inc. is pretty good um, the book Fast Food Nation is also quite good um, I still see your argument as circular Gary I really do I mean you're talking about these these foods are being sold at a premium because of their availability. Um, but like a meat behavior, like this town here, right? This town was the whole fucking thing was covered with peach trees. Okay, <laughs> it even it even financed their own railroad. We actually had a railroad in a little tiny town like this because the peach industry was so dominant they need. They needed to transport the peaches without beating the hell out of them, the hell out of them on gravel roads. But anyway, that's a whole long story. Um, so I'm just saying, there's lots of capacity that's not being not being utilized anymore. Okay, because like you say, because there isn't a market. I'm saying if you subsidize demand, okay, if you subsidize, create a market because of price, because of price attractiveness. All right, that's the way to go. So yeah create the market first and then feed it but this idea that now it's just again like I say I'm just going to keep arguing the price is just it's out of the range of being practical of being practical I mean it's not practical for me to buy fresh fruit when I can I can buy a bag of flour for you know 25 cents this is where I disagree with you I really don't think the onus lies on the state um, I think it should be the individual watching up for their own health and their own well-being. Um, if they want to lead a healthy lifestyle, they should be they should be willing to pay the premium at at the moment for now for these fruits and vegetables. Because a lot of people in this country do have that within their means. Um, we're talking about the average income being what I think it is like forty-one thousand dollars a year in the United States, even with a family. Even with a family, that's enough to at least supplement your diet with fruits and vegetables. But we really don't. But we really don't see that occurring. We see a lot of people purchasing unhealthy foods, a lot of cheap breads, a lot of cheap pastas, um, spending money on fast food because it's cheap, and they want to spend their money on consumer electronics and payments for their new car and payments for the house that they can't afford. It's just doesn't make any sense to me. It's completely... Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm just going to argue from my perspective. People look... I'm, not paying, I'm not paying the real cost and the, the real value of these products. So why, you know, there's just no argument to be had in my opinion. But whatever, fine, whatever. Uh, I'm... Um... It is dismissed. People want processed foods. 
salt cook it fat Yeah, well, I'm just saying it's kind of a long-term uh, investment I, thing, okay? I mean, apple trees don't grow overnight. So, I mean, it's the kind of thing I'm just saying if the government subsidized the production and, and, and subsidized the price so you could, you know, you had some sort of guarantee that you're going to get your money back you know, on your investment, I just this, uh, even that, even that minimum, just guarantee, um, you know, the price of production, um, then, yeah, I think if you produce more and you can have it at a lower price, it'll be more attractive. People will eat more of it. So to me, that's the way to go. The idea of forcing the other way around where, okay, you have to create excessive consumption now, even though you don't have, no, you don't have excessive production available. So you won't even have production to fill the consumption des demand. And it's just going to drive prices up in the short term. So, I mean, it's going to get even more expensive in the short term and before you have the um, investment that's going to be five years down the road this is another one of those things where you know you can't plant the fucking apple tree today and have apples today it's going to take you five years before you can hear fucking apples at least mm -hmm. I would disagree with your your uh, your evaluation of the situation as far as the mean income of the entire nation there's a lot of folks under the poverty level and they can't afford to buy vegetables we're giving the corn industry alone 4.8 billion dollars a year plus to grow corn okay that's a big problem all that corn our brilliant scientists have figured out ways to make all sorts of cheap products that are extremely fattening and we, I can't afford vegetables I have two fucking jobs dude and I still can't afford to pay for vegetables I love them. I get them canned, but I can't afford to buy fresh raw vegetables. Are you vegetables? Are you fucking kidding me? Exactly. So why I'm just saying that. So that's why we should be subsidizing the one instead of subsidizing the other. There's all Th that was more for Gambrianos than you. And, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> and, but yeah, that's just if we create the. You know, I'm just saying if it's somewhere something has to something has to be the impetus for things to happen and so I'm just saying that all the government has to do is create the impetus and I think people will yeah. fall into line because they, they used to eat differently and then go back to eating what they used to eat again if we go back to a world where they can afford to do it. I understand that there are hundreds of millions of Americans that are living below the poverty line but we're still not talking about the majority. We're talking about a majority of Americans who have made a lifestyle choice, and that's to purchase these elect these um, uh, these entirely elective um, goods. Um, they they're not forced to buy them. They buy them because they are incredibly easy to get. They buy them because they are convenient, because they are cheap. But really, what they have to take into consideration, and this is something that comes out of the product product of education, is investment in their own future not just their own health, but the health of their children and the well-being of their nation. That's why I will maintain this is not the responsibility of the state to facilitate this. This is the responsibility of the individual. Um, I do have problems, um, like Gary was talking about in this room several hours ago, with taxation on luxury goods that are considered unhealthy, like alcohol and cigarettes, and it not being placed on uh, fatty foods or sugary foods or anything that contains high fructose corn syrup. Yes, I admit it's a failing of the state. But if the populace wants these goods to be cheaper, if they want them to be cheaper, they have to increase demand. It's very fucking simple. Well, you can keep saying it's very simple, but it's not because they, they have to wait five years for that increased demand to, in, to be interpreted into a cheaper price. It can't happen overnight. And so they're not going to be rewarded for switching over. They're going to be punished for switching over in the short term. And that's why there has to be some mechanism that um, takes that into account. Uh, that's why it can't just happen based on human impulse and human initiative. It has to be, it has to be happens because you actually have a plan, because you initiate an action to get a reaction. And as far as that argument goes, that's more circular and as circular as our argument. The demand may be there. You're speculating on people's demand to eat fresh, wholesome, 
nutritious food but they don't have that option because they don't see the option because they're making minimum wage working two jobs with a family of four the demand most likely is there people don't want to eat shit they want to eat decent wholesome food but because of their social situation and paycheck they can't afford it again you're talking about the minority the medium income for an individual in the United States is forty-one thousand dollars a year. No. And could you get a link to that? Link? I'd like I'd like to see that because the poverty line it's much worse than that currently. Much worse. It is. That's an artificial figure from just dividing from just dividing up the GDP. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to use numbers based where where the rich are blended into the poor, and you come up with some fucking number. Um, but regardless, it doesn't matter. The point is, is relative to other food choices, okay? Relative, relative to what is subsidized, which is meat, okay? What is subsidized, which is corn. What is subsidized, okay? So these, these subsidies create a fake market, okay, which creates a fake competition. So you have to have something to balance out against that competition, and you're not going to fix the problem again, in my opinion, by obliging people to think five years ahead, because people don't live five years from now. They live now. You know they make choices in the short term. They don't make choices in the long term. So they so will they get nearly go. immediate. They have to create mechanisms to encourage long-term investment, not short-term investment. And that's why it fails when government doesn't step in when it needs to. But the once in a while has to build the Hoover Dam or some other investment in the goddamn future. They will get immediate returns, lower health care premiums, a healthier lifestyle, less money spent on medicine. Um, that those are all immediate returns. I ate a dozen apples and I'm all cured. What a crock of shit. You're denying that diabetes type 2 and, and obesity are a pandemic in our country? Not at all. Not at all. And it's caused by the cheap food. But let me respond to what was said earlier. Those statistics are available on the IRS website and the U.S. Census Bureau website. I don't believe they're artificial because they come from those sources. I agree that poverty is a problem in the United States. It is a huge problem in the U.S. But at the moment, even in our incredibly volatile economic situation, it is still not the majority of the populace. The majority of the populace is electing to take this lifestyle choice. They are electing not to spend their income on leading a healthier lifestyle. They are choosing to spend the majority of their income on, on luxury goods, on consumer electronics, on their mortgage for the house they can't afford, on the payments for their car. Um, it's the majority of their income is being spent on these frivolous, ridiculous items which aren't going to benefit them in any way. Well, that's just bullshit. I'm not going to benefit them in any way. What, their widescreen TV is not going to benefit them in any way? Uh, you know, their supercharged nuclear vibrator is not going to benefit them in any way? Come on, there's lots of toys that are beneficial to people's lives. So that's just bullshit. And the point, again, is the argument is, is obviously... There's huge subsidies in agriculture, okay, for wheat and corn, all right, and then animal bypro animal products, okay. There's there's subsidies built into the system, and so this fresh vegetable thing doesn't compete in the same. But even that's subsidized to some extent. But I mean, it's subsidized to, for these local growers in California. Everybody's making their cut off of this shit, all right. I'm just saying that there's a the incentive would be to create this stuff at a more competitive price, and there's no competitive price here. So you'd have to be, you've got to be an asshole in a, in a sense to pay what three dollars a pound for something fresh when you can buy it for fifty cents frozen, and then you can buy something else that'll give you twice as many calories for twenty-five cents. Yeah, I'm gonna go with whoever gets me the calories. Calories. Show me one person whose life has been enriched by owning an iPhone or having a 6,000 square foot house, and I will concede. I can show you many people who have had their life improved by eating healthier and exercising regularly. Nobody's arguing against that, but the point is, is what encourages that behavior? And do you have to encourage it? 
do you have to create mechanisms that make it more